Cool. I got a funny feeling. Hello, people. I'm Javi Kuwait, joined by Megan Lay, aka Melee. And uh, we're looking at Best Fight of Akshay Kumar. A fan of Akshay Kumar uploaded this, but. Uh, there are subtitles by Humorous Love. There's subtitles by Humorous Love. And uh, thank you, Humorous Love, for making the subtitles. Very much appreciated. Just to give you guys some background information Megan Lay is uh, an actress, a stunt woman, a martial artist, a dancer, and all around fun lady. So. <laughs> Thanks. You're not so bad yourself. Yeah, I try. You're a fun lady too. I am a fun lady. In my former lifetime. Oh, he's young. Jesus. Oh my god, they're both young. So that's Saif Ali Khan and that's Akshay Kumar. Oh. Okay? <laughs> This feels like an 80s action film to me. Yeah, well. What year is this? <laughs> he did, that was all in one take. Yeah. From one camera angle. Thriller all of a sudden. Oh. oh. That's one way. No. This, this feels so much like the 80s Van Damme, uh, Duff Lundgren era. Heck yeah. They're not gonna fight. Oh, they are gonna fight, okay. We need broken bottles too. That would hurt me. Ow. Another dragon reference? No way. <laughs> wow. Oh my. Uh, I trained my shin in Kung Fu. You know what they say, no pain, no gain. Oh, what? Chewing gum. Time cop. Van Dam, I raise you fire. See your kick, I raise you fire. Oh my gosh. Sound effects sound like Street Fighter 2. Oh. Because fire can spread, you know. <laughs> Stupid. Nice. Awesome. It's quite a jump. You notice how they didn't show the bottom. What? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, 
लगी है सातों आदमी चाहिए जा वापस खजुआ तेरा बाप Oh wow, that that feels quite dated. It feels so much like the stuff we used to watch growing up. Heck yeah! I mean, it, its inspirations feel like that certainly. Like I said, Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren, Brandon Lee, random people who you don't even know the name of. There's a movie called The Perfect Weapon. Old timer stunt coordinator guy. James oh. Liu was in The Perfect Weapon. Oh. And so, huh? Is it old timer? Old, he's old timer. Yeah. He's an old timer. I mean, he's been around a long time. I was actually quite amazed with how much fighting they are doing with the fire. I mean, I haven't done personally a lot of fire. I've done some. All those kicks, all the spinning kicks, and getting his leg up close to his body, and his the rest of his body didn't have fire gel on it. So that was pretty impressive. And I think the trans. I know try fire transfers from one thing to another. Dodo bird. <laughs> I'm all keeping it PG. <laughs> Dodo bird. <laughs> but. To do it in a coordinated it's, no, way. It, it was just hilarious because the fire got on the guy and you're like, oh, like as if. I was saying, <laughs> oh, in a behind the scenes sense. Like they were able to make that happen. I know, but like, it's almost like someone gets their head chopped off and blood spurts out. You're like, oh, is that what blood. happened? Blood. <laughs> I didn't know. No, but don't you think that's impressive? How oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just playing around. I mean, I haven't done any fire stunts myself, nor have I actually seen it up close. That's tricky. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine. That's, that is wild. And that, you got like, what, like nine, 10 seconds usually with fire before it goes? So this is a lot of work. All these guys too are supposed to have some sort of precautionary, like fire gel and stuff on them. I do wonder like how much precautions were taken in, in an effort to make this fight scene. Especially speaking to, you know, some big actors in India, my impression of the way fight scenes, at least, were conducted, maybe not today, but were conducted is like, you just do it, figure it out, just do it. You know, and that's a very Asian thing as well. Jackie Chan has talked about that. If he has to do this long jump in Hong Kong, you go, okay, let's just do it on flat ground. We try it, okay, we made it. So let's just do it across this gap now. Mm -hmm. Like we just do it, right? Whereas in America, you like calculating the wind, you're doing measurements and there's all kinds of safety precautions. You put a mat down, but like there's a lot more that goes into when you're doing a stunt in the States in order to avoid lawsuits, injury, hampering down production with a problem of some kind. When I see this, I think, well, they probably just try to find a way to make it work as quickly as possible, which is also dangerous. Also the time period. Or, yeah, exactly right? the time period, yeah. I mean, this is, I think this is from 20 the, years ago, is this 20 years ago? I think it's from the 90s. Because these are still working actors. Akshay Kumar and uh, Saif Ali Khan, they're still movie stars today. I would imagine it was probably 20 years ago, like late 90s, early 2000s. For me, when I watch this, I look at their outfits, I look at their hair, I look at the style hair. of the, the way it's edited and shot. It feels very much like- The fight choreography Yeah, the fight choreography. Yeah, the too. choreography feels very 80s. Even so far back as the 70s, like you watch the way Akshay Kumar is moving, it feels straight up like out of Enter the Dragon or The Big Boss. Both yeah. of those are Bruce Lee films. Like the way it's choreographed, the way it's shot and edited. Like you see the very first thing that Akshay Kumar does, it's all in one take and it's one angle. It's very simple. And there's something cool about that, even though it looks funny and it sounds funny, there's something cool about it at the same time that you just did that in one go. You know, you don't have time. At the time, like fewer people appreciated fight scenes. You just had to make it work as fast as possible. And that was impressive then. Yeah. And we're like oversaturated now with FX, special effects yeah. too, and right? So we're a little jaded. Yeah, I mean, if you open up Instagram, it doesn't take you but a second to see something that is way more mind blowing than this in terms of agility, in terms of stunt work, in terms of like just epicness, like people like flipping off a building or something like that. You know, you see that all the time now. These Russians were hanging from these uh, skyscraper um, machineries with like their pinky. Crazy stuff like that. If you go on Instagram, you see Russian parkour people on top of buildings mm -hmm. hanging from their pinky. I don't agree with that at all. I think it's too dangerous. But anyway, my point is that this used to be, like you said, what yeah. was the coolest thing available. I appreciate it in that regard. The sound effects is really the biggest thing that I had a problem with because that's what made it feel dated. Hokey. And hokey mm -hmm. is the sound effects. Everything else was actually fine. Like the humor is fine. The way it's shot and edited is fine. It's just the sound effects made it bad. And so you take that out and you replace it with the kind of sounds you'd hear today. I think this could actually work and, and would have aged more appropriately. I think if you threw in today's sound effects with keeping everything else the way it is, it would be very awkward. Really? Yes. You think so? Yes. Because even Enter the Dragon, those movies you referenced, sound effects were the same. A lot of the 
No, no, I don't mean like vocal sound effects. I mean like oh. I mean like hits, like the punches and the kicks. Like the first time I noticed that kind of disparity with sound effects uh, was when Jackie Chan's films were brought to the states. The American producers would have the sound effects redubbed, so it would sound less like a chop sake film. The punches and the kicks, even though they, they they were more they were still pronounced, but they felt more real. Real. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that as well with Lethal Weapon Four. You have Jet Li fighting, and traditionally you see him in these kung fu films where he's a Shaolin monk, and it's like. It's so loud, right? Everything uh -huh. is like front. Whereas in Lethal Weapon 4, you have the American producers on it and it's like, it's still pronounced, but it's more nuanced sounds and there's, there's a wide library of sounds. So instead of using the same three sound effects, you have a hundred sound effects, which makes it feel more three dimensional. Real. Same likewise here, it's just like the same sounds being used over and over again, because just like with the production, they're trying to get through the edit as fast as possible. <laughs> so they just use the same sounds over and over again. Got you. I hurt my palm. <laughs> Over here, this. Yeah, I'm punching my palm. That, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I hurt Megan Lay's ears, so it's well deserved. It's okay, I have another one. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay, I got two. We got a backup. <laughs> it's all right. This was fun. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully, you enjoyed some of that. And be sure to check out Megan Lay on the social media, Melee, on her Instagram, doing kicks and punches and whatnot, living her best life. And a life. lot of this. And a lot of that. And uh, flipping and kicking together. You can find her in the vlog. It's called She Burned My Ass. That's right. Yep. That's Megan Lay. That's me. I'm burning my ass. All the time. So, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon. All notifications, please. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs, and interviews. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Megan Lay. Peace out.